Hello, I'm Dudley Anderson, one of your Lycoming County judges. Welcome to the North Penn Legal Services Custody and Visitation Video Workshop for Lycoming County. The video is to provide basic information about how a child custody dispute may be handled by the courts, including the options of negotiation and mediation. In the next 30 minutes or so, we will define some key legal terms such as legal custody and physical custody. We will also examine some of the factors parents must consider in deciding whether to file a custody lawsuit. We will then look at several common situations involving child custody. Finally, we will describe what happens once a custody lawsuit is started. Can you file papers without a lawyer? Where do you file the papers? When is the hearing? What happens at the hearing? Who makes the decision? Of course, no two custody cases are exactly the same and the law can change. There is no certain way to predict the results of your case. This video is intended to provide basic procedural information and should not be taken as legal advice. Please remember it is the goal of the Lycoming County Court System to provide you with a forum to reach a fair resolution of your case that is in the best interest of the child. Many people believe they know a little bit about custody law and they are quite willing to offer you their opinions. Perhaps your neighbor or cousin has told you that the judge always gives custody to the mother, or fathers always win. Or maybe you were told that a 12-year-old gets to choose where to live. These are examples of street law, which is usually wrong. Every case is different, and what happened to Cousin Jane or your friend Bill might not happen to your case. Let's look at some of the key terms used in custody law. Best interest of the child. This is what judges must determine in making a custody ruling. It represents all the factors a judge must consider when making a decision, including the circumstances and environment of each parent's household, the child's preference, work schedules, and many others. Legal custody. This is the right to be informed about and participate in major decisions affecting the child's physical, mental, and emotional well-being. Most custody orders provide for shared legal custody so that both parents are involved in these major issues. Physical custody. This means the right to have the child free of any other restrictions or supervision. It can be sole or shared. Shared custody. This means shared legal or physical custody, or both, of a child in such a way as to assure the child of frequent and continuing contact with both parents. Sole custody, ordered only under extreme circumstances, such as when the other parent is convicted of certain crimes against children. Supervised visitation, when a person does not have the right to have the child unless visits are supervised. It is very important to keep these terms in mind as you watch the video, prepare for your hearing, or attempt to carry out the specific terms of an order or agreement. They should also be helpful to you if you and the other party decide to try mediation or to work out your own agreement. Sometimes when parents break up, separate or divorce, they are able to make their own custody and visitation plans or schedules. They take into account each other's wishes, interests, work schedules, and lifestyle, as well as the needs and wishes of the children. They may be able to do this on their own, or they may talk to friends, relatives, religious leaders, counselors, or lawyers in creating a workable plan. Sometimes people agree to submit their problem to a mediator, who will set ground rules for discussion and assist them in understanding each person's point of view and coming to a fair agreement. If you and the other parent of your child think you can create your own workable plan and do not need a court order, you and the child are indeed fortunate. If you and the other parent can create a workable plan and both of you agree for that plan to be a court order, the agreement can be submitted to the court for court approval. This is called a stipulation. We sincerely hope that this custody video will help you decide to do what is best for you and your children. 
Of course, the information contained in this video must be quite general in nature and must not be considered to be legal advice. Every case is different and we cannot predict how your case will turn out. Hello, Mrs. Smith. My name is Ryan Gardner. I understand that you may want to discuss filing a custody lawsuit. My husband and I separated seven months ago. We were arguing all the time, and finally the kids and I moved into my parents. He stayed in New Jersey. Were you and your husband able to work out a custody schedule? We tried, and it worked for a while, but we argued a lot about it. The kids have a lot of activities, and sometimes they don't want to go to New Jersey for the weekend. Have you managed to agree on a set schedule? We can't. His work keeps changing. He will want them when I have something planned or he won't come at all. I'm assuming then that things are getting worse. They're much worse. He started threatening to keep the kids. He found out that I was seeing someone and he always wants to bring that up. He's beginning to scare me. Well, if things break down to this point, you may need to file a custody lawsuit to make sure everybody knows what they can and can't do. A court order can give you a schedule, but everybody's going to have to then follow that schedule. Where can I file a custody lawsuit? In Pennsylvania, all custody lawsuits must be filed in the county courts, which are called the Courts of Common Pleas. Generally, the lawsuit must be filed in the state and county where the child has lived for the last six months, or where an existing custody order was filed, even if that is in another state. There are exceptions to this rule. Mrs. Smith, when exactly did you leave New Jersey? It will be eight months next week. Have you lived with your parents in this county ever since? No, I found a place a couple blocks away after I was here for a month. Are you certain that neither one of you ever filed for custody here or in New Jersey? We never separated before. We've been married for 10 years. Well, how long in total did you live in New Jersey? We were there for eight years. All three of our kids were born there. At this point, I believe we can file a custody lawsuit here. You and the children have lived in this county and in the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania for at least six months. How do I file a custody lawsuit? If you are unable to hire an attorney to file a custody lawsuit or submit a stipulation, you can file a custody complaint on your own. In Lycoming County, forms are available for you to file on your own or pro se at North Penn Legal Services or on the Lycoming County Law Association website at www.lycolaw.org. Watching this video should be a helpful first step because before you file, you need to know where to file and if you should file. All the forms and instructions you will need are in the packet you obtain. If you cannot afford to pay filing fees, you should file the forms to request the court to let you file without payment of costs or in forma pauperis. This form is available with the forms you receive from North Penn Legal Services or on the Lycoming County Law Association website. Hello, my name is Dana Jacques. I'm a family court hearing officer here in Lycoming County. In our county, we have two full-time family court hearing officers who handle family court matters. We're attorneys who have been hired by the court to handle custody cases and other family court proceedings. Our purpose is to help the court more efficiently manage the family court caseload. In Lycoming County, all initial custody petitions and modification petitions start right here in family court. The first matter that will be scheduled is a custody conference, which will be presided over by a family court hearing officer. The vast majority of our custody cases are resolved right here at the custody conference level. That makes it unnecessary to go before a judge for a custody trial. There are two purposes to the custody conference. The first purpose is to give the parties an opportunity to reach a formal custody agreement. Maybe the parties have never had an opportunity to sit down together discuss their differences, and come up with an arrangement that works best for everyone. The custody conference allows this to happen in a safe environment with someone there, like myself, who handles custody cases on a daily basis. Sometimes it just helps to have someone in the room 
who can talk to the parties about the problems that many families go through and who can spotlight the issues that need to be put down on paper. If the parties reach an agreement at the custody conference, then the family court hearing officer can prepare a court order which will be enforceable as an order of court even though it contains just the provisions agreed upon by the parties. The second purpose of the custody conference is to come up with a temporary order and to then schedule the matter for further proceedings in front of a judge in the event that the parties are unable to reach an agreement at the custody conference. Now, many people ask our office, do I need to have an attorney present? And the simple answer is no. Attorneys are not required at custody proceedings. In fact, you're probably watching this video because you've decided not to have an attorney present, and that's fine. But if you wish, you can have an attorney accompany you for custody proceedings, and this may help you. Many people have questions about custody law, custody proceedings, and what are the important issues to bring before the court. A professional can certainly advise you on these matters. But as I said before, it is not required that you have an attorney. The final thing I'd like to talk to you about is service. Service means formally notifying the other side about the court proceeding. The wonderful thing about our court system is that everyone has an opportunity to come and tell their side of the story. And service guarantees that the other party knows about the date and time of the custody conference or the other court proceeding that may be scheduled. If you are the one requesting a custody conference, it is your responsibility to serve the other side with a copy of the notice stating the date and time of the custody conference and a copy of your custody petition. There are two ways to accomplish service. The first way is through certified mail, but this way is only successful if you receive back from the post office the green card that has been signed by the other side. That proves to us that the other side has indeed received the documents. The other way of accomplishing service is to have someone hand the documents to the other party directly. Now, since you're a party to the custody action, you can't be the one who hands the documents to the other party. It has to be another adult, and it can be a sheriff as well. Once the documents are handed to the other party, that individual needs to fill out an affidavit of service stating, under penalty of perjury, that they have indeed handed those documents to the other party. If you arrive at a custody conference and the other party is present, then service is not an issue. If the other party is not present, however, you will need to show the family court hearing officer proof of service, that is, either the green card or the affidavit of service. If you do not have these documents, we will have to reschedule your conference to give you another chance to properly serve the other side. Thank you for your attention and perhaps I'll be seeing you in the near future at a custody conference. Hello, my name is Diane Turner. I'm also a custody conferencing officer here in Lycoming County. So what happens at a custody conference? First, the parties should arrive early and check in with the family court office. In the event someone fails to appear, the conference can go on without them. Keep in mind, though, that it is the duty of the person who filed the custody action to serve the other party with notice of the conference by giving them their copy of the scheduling order as soon as they receive it. Before a hearing will start without one of the parties, the hearing officer must be convinced that the other party who did not appear had proper notice of the conference. The best thing to do is to send the notice by certified mail and bring the signed for green card to the conference with you. Only the party to the custody action will be permitted to participate and to be present at the conference. Children should not be brought to the custody conference. Everyone will have the opportunity to speak, but only one at a time and only in order. Each side will have an opportunity to say everything that they need to say. The hearing officer will let everyone know when it is their turn, so it is important to listen. 
After all, it is very important to be able to respond to what others say, as well as to present your own story. What should you say at a custody hearing? Well, say what you would like to see happen to your child. You should have a plan in mind that you can express with detail. You should be able to say what days and times the child should be with one party or with the other. If you don't come to an agreement about custody issues, the hearing officer will be making the decision for you. So it is important to give the hearing officer the information that will let them make the right decision for you and for your family. If you have special plans on a certain day of the week, or if your work schedule requires that you pick up your child at certain times, you should let the hearing officer know these things. Otherwise, your order may not fit with your schedule. It is a good idea to write down notes. Don't be afraid to write down what you want to say. When you come to court, you can look at your notes and you can refer to them so you don't forget anything. This is too important to leave anything to forget. Don't try to memorize what you want to say. The worst approach to bring to a custody hearing would be to simply berate the other party or to say negative things for the purpose of making them look bad. You need to give the hearing officer a positive reason to accept your position, not just try to say the other party is wrong and go ahead thinking that's okay. For the hearing officer to give your request serious consideration, you need to be willing to compromise. Above all, you need to think of the well-being of your child. Sometimes people come to a custody hearing with the attitude that they need to fight. In family court, that is not the right thing to do. When you come to family court, there is a job to get done, and fighting only gets people hurt. The person who gets hurt the most is the child in the middle because, as you may have heard, the biggest stress on a child in a custody dispute is not going to court. It's not visiting with one parent or the other on specific days. It is seeing the battle that goes on between the parents. That stress on the child is worse than anything else that happens during a custody action. So after all of that is done, what happens after a custody conference? Well, first the parties could come to an agreement and then never have to come back to court again. That would be best. The second option that more often happens is that the hearing officer enters a recommended order. That is a custody order that the parties must follow. If one party failed to follow the order, they could be subjected to sanctions for contempt of court. If one or both parties disagree with the hearing officer's recommended order, a pretrial hearing before the judge will be scheduled. The pretrial judge is not the same judge who will ultimately hear the custody trial. You will be required to bring to the pretrial hearing a pretrial memorandum which lists your witnesses for trial and other information. The pretrial is another opportunity to try and reach an agreement about the custody of your child. The pretrial judge will be able to give the parties his opinion on how the court generally rules in specific situations. If an agreement is not reached, a date for a custody trial will be set. Custody trials usually happen within one to three months of the pretrial date. Hello. I am Judge Joy McCoy. I am a judge presiding in Lycoming County. I, along with the other judges in Lycoming County, preside over the child custody cases that are filed within our county. This video is designed to help you better understand how a child custody dispute is proceeded through the system and to help you better understand how a court decides a child custody case. There are many reasons why you should try to avoid what we refer to as a custody battle. A custody dispute is very emotionally damaging. It is damaging not only to your children, but to you as the parents as well. Many times when I talk to children who are involved in a custody case, as I am required to do by the law, the children relay to me that they would like nothing more than for their parents not to fight about their custody situation. A child loves both of their parents. Proceeding through a custody dispute in the courts could injure the child the second reason that it pays to resolve a custody dispute among yourselves without proceeding to court is that once a matter proceeds before a judge, you lose all control in regards to the outcome of the proceeding. This is a very risky situation for you because it means that you no longer have any input into the custody order that is ultimately rendered. The judge alone decides what is in the best interest of your child. In addition, 
A judge has the power to impose all sorts of restrictions in a custody order. You may not be happy with the restrictions that are placed upon you. For example, I may place a restriction in an order which indicates that either of the parents are prohibited from consuming alcohol during their period of custody. There may be language placed in an order which indicates that a parent's boyfriend or girlfriend is prohibited from having contact with the child while in the parent's presence. Language may be placed in an order which indicates that a parent's period of custody is to be supervised or to be held only in a certain location. You may be required to take anger management courses, parenting courses, or perhaps counseling. There are many restrictions that a court could place upon you, which you may not be happy with. I'm going to base my decision on what is best for your child. If you and the other parent search your hearts, I believe you can determine what is best for the child. The third reason to try to work out a custody dispute before you proceed to court is that a custody proceeding can be both complicated and expensive. You are not required to have an attorney. The law says that you can represent yourself. However, you will be held to the same rules of procedure and rules of evidence that the attorneys are held to. The law says that I must be impartial as the judge. Therefore, I am not permitted to provide you with any special treatment because you are representing yourself in the custody proceedings. If you do have an attorney, then you must be prepared to expend a significant amount of money as you proceed through the custody proceedings. Even if you're representing yourself, you may incur cost with a psychological evaluation, which is where a psychologist or a psychiatrist will evaluate you, the other parent, and the children and make a recommendation to the court in regards to custody. The fourth reason to try to work out the custody proceedings before coming to court is that a custody order is never final until a child turns 18 years of age. You may go through all of the emotional turmoil and expense of a custody trial only to have your order be in effect for just a few months because there then may be some changes in your life, your child's life, or the other parent's life, which requires you to come back to court and get a new order. There are procedures in place for modification of custody. Those procedures, however, may require you to go through an entire new hearing before a custody order is entered. Therefore, all of the time and energy and emotional strain that went through the first custody proceeding may be for nothing. If you do wind up proceeding to court, you may be wondering what are the things that guide a judge in making a decision in regards to custody. Let me outline some of those things for you. The law says that if both parents are fit, both parents have a right to have time with their children. A time that a parent spends with the child will not be limited unless there are extreme circumstances which would cause a parent's time to be limited with their child. My own personal belief is that it is critical to a child to spend as much time as possible with both of their parents. A child has a right to know both of their parents. Parents many times confuse what is in their best interest versus what is in their child's best interest. It is my duty to decide what is in the best interest of the child, not what is in the parent's best interest. No preference is given to a parent based upon their sex. Mothers are not preferred and fathers are not preferred. In the court's eyes, both parents are on equal footing. Another factor that will be considered is the child's preference. If the child is old enough and can state a valid factual basis for their reasoning, the court will consider the child's preference in a custody case. There is a myth that circulates that states that when a child turns 12 years old, the child has the right to decide which parent the child will live with. This is not the case. The court will speak to children as young as five and as old as 17. And it is based upon what the child has to say and the reasoning that the child has will determine the amount of weight the court will give to that child's preference. A child's preference, however, is never controlling. It is just one of the factors that the court will consider in determining the child custody case. The court will give very serious consideration 
to which parent provides the most access for the children to the other parent. If a parent is interfering with custody, uncooperative, criticizing the other parent in the presence of the child, doing everything within their power to attempt to put a wedge between the child and the other parent, the court will give this considerable consideration in determining custody. The parent who is fostering a relationship between their child and the other parent and doing everything within their power to see that a relationship is maintained with the child and the other parent stands to get a considerable amount of physical custody. Another principle that is of importance to the court is that a parent's right to custody is in no way tied to child support. I know that many of you out there watching this video have problems perhaps with collecting child support or receiving child support in, in a timely manner. The law says that the right to support is separate to the rights of custody. Children have a right to know both of their parents regardless what the support arrangement may be between the parents. Children have nothing to do with support. That is between the parents. Custody is all about the child's rights. Now, as I said in the beginning, you're always better off trying to resolve your custody dispute among yourselves, even if it is only a piece of it. For example, if you and the other parent are able to work out your weekend visitation, um, how your general schedule is going to be, but are having some difficulties in deciding how to resolve the division of the holidays, you can simply bring that issue to the court. You can let the court know that you've resolved a portion of the case and are asking the court to only decide particular issues. This is completely acceptable to the court and in fact preferable to the court. If you cannot work out the custody on your own, the courts are always available to help you by rendering a decision. The decision will be made based upon what is in the best interest of your child. That is always the driving force in custody decisions. If there is anything that is more difficult for the court than deciding a custody case, I don't know what that could be. Custody cases are difficult for everyone. I encourage you to work out your custody case, but if you can't, the court is here to help you. So that is how custody cases are handled in Lycoming County. I hope you feel comfortable with the process now and that you rest assured that custody court is here if you need it.